Hello and welcome to News Click. The cabinet has re uh, relaxed the spectrum holding limits and has also allowed more time to the telecom companies to pay for the wavelengths that they buy during the auctions. To discuss the issue, we are joined by Prabhu Purkaista, who is editor in chief of News Click and has also been working on these issues for more than three decades now. Welcome to News Click, Prabhu. So, what does this entire decision imply that they have relaxed the spectrum holding limits and they've, I think, moved the cap? to somewhere around 50 percent? Well, there are two sets of issues really related to what the cabinet has decided. One is what directly affects the government revenue and how the spectrum was auctioned. The spectrum was auctioned on a certain basis in which it was said that you will get 10 years, including two-year moratorium, to pay the spectrum uh, fees with a certain upfront payment that you would have to make. So the auction price was fixed on this these terms. Now the question is if you relax the auction term now to 16 years, then you are changing retrospectively an auction that was done in which different players had quoted based on what were the then existing terms. So this is a retrospective a change of an auction which was done. And does the government really have the authority or the legal, uh, shall we say, uh, ability to make these changes? Because this, to me, is a legal issue that the government cannot retrospectively change what it had originally auctioned on certain terms because that makes the auction itself different than what it has now been fixed as. So I think that's a larger issue that remains. Yes, this issue had also come up regarding when we talked about the revenue share from the auction fees. At that time, we, as Delhi Science Forum, had questioned this decision of the government to change from revenue share, change to revenue share from direct license fees, which is what was supposed to have been paid up front. And at that time, the court really did not give a decision on this. We had approached the Delhi High Court. The case was never really decided. Because even today, I feel one of the reasons it was not decided because the court felt what we were saying made sense, but at the same time, given the government had already proceeded on these lines, therefore they did not want to really upset the apple cart. So that still remains a legal issue, changing retrospectively the auction terms and conditions. The second issue which you are raising is really with respect to the uh, spectrum uh, limits. Now here two things have been done. One is that the spectrum limits have been changed for each circle. And I'll come to that in a minute. And then also the total spectrum holding that you can have, that has also been changed. That has been raised from 25 to 35 percent. And the spectrum holding in a circle, which was in each band, it could be maximum of 50 percent. Now it's become a combined uh, 50 percent limit for all bands less than one gigahertz. But it combines all the spectrum bands and then sets a 50 percent limit. It also makes it the limit in a way that it seems to specifically favor two players. One is the Vodafone idea merger that is taking place in which five circles had come explicitly with this uh, under this ba band because the combined band was more than what was allowed for earlier. And therefore, they would have been forced to let go of that spectrum. So that has now been changed because it is across uh, the country, not for its circles. Therefore, it allows, uh, obviously, uh, the ability to go beyond what was originally there. The second part of it is the uh, sub gigahertz. Again, this is, uh, if you, for instance, came up against the 50% circle limit with the Vodafone idea also would have come. Uh, the same issue applies also to Geo, because Geo was buying, buying RCOM uh, band. And again, they would have been forced to let go some of this band in some circles or in the 850 megahertz band because 850 megahertz band was where the problem lay for them that ARCOM also had uh, uh, spectrum in that band. So what has done by combining the sub 1 gigahertz bands, so it has helped Geo. So it has helped by removing the circle band, it has helped uh, a Vodafone idea merger and by combining the sub gigahertz, all the bands, it has specifically helped Geo. So these are seems to be very, very specific measures 
to help specific companies. And this creates in that sense a much bigger monopoly than what had what had held earlier. We must understand all these were put in place in order to uh, help the consumer not to face monopolies. What this has done is really it created much larger monopolies and that is not good in the long run for the consumer. So the cabinet is also saying that this will also give boost to the industry which has somewhere around 7.7 .7 lakh crore of debt. Do you agree with that? Uh, statement that the cabinet is making. Well, let's put it this way. The, what is the really, what does 7.7 .7 lakh crore debt really mean? And again, there are questions on this because I saw the ICRA figures say claim that's 4.7 lakh crore debt. So we really don't have a clear understanding of the debt unless the Reserve Bank makes known what the individual company's debts are, which it hasn't done till date, as you know. Because this issue has come up again and again regarding NPS, bad debts, and so on. This is held to be a commercial secret. So we don't have, we're not privy to what the debts really are. But assuming it's five to seven, five to eight lakh crore debt. So this debt gets relieved in the following way: that instead of having to pay for license fees over a 10-year period, now you're going to be paying over a 16-year period. So you pay less. And then from the revenue you get, you're likely to have a better uh, balance in terms of the inflows and outflows. So you're in a better position to also pay back your bankers. So this is one part of the argument. Now, other argument which the industry is giving that this is not good enough for us. We also want an interest being lowered. So now the, that, of course, is the industry's always uh, claim that they are so badly distressed that they all all kinds of uh, goodies have to be given to them, no monopoly restrictions, which is what the government has given, in the changing of the terms of the payment, and also lowering of interest rates. The government at the moment has not lowered the interest rates because it also faces the issue that the banks are stressed. If the banks are stressed, reducing the interest rates essentially penalizes the banks. So this is the other part of it. But yes, one of the reasons that these companies are in debt is the fact that they actually paid license fees uh, at a time when they thought that they will be able to recover all of it from the consumers. What really happened, that this was a, uh, in, in fact one of the fallouts of the 2G uh, issue, 2G scam if you will, is Raja's giving out 2G licenses in small slices of spectrum did also make the viability of the sector more at risk. And that is one of the reasons these companies then have not been as successful as they thought they would. And later on, they did not invest essentially in the infrastructure, which, what, which is what they really required to be able to use their spectrum more efficiently and generate more revenue. So they did the short, uh, shall we say, short-term measure of lowering prices but not putting in the investments. And today, therefore, the only company which has come in with fat, uh, shall we say, fat uh, wallet is Geo because it has so much money from the Reliance, uh, gas, uh, oil, uh, other, other uh, monies that it controls. It's able to bankroll for, for the short term at least a huge expansion of infrastructure. And because it's able to bring in that amount of money, and with relatively much less burden of debt on it, uh, that it has really become a big threat to the existing players. And that's also the reason Geo has said all these things should not have been done. Only thing that should have been done was to remove the restriction of the bandwidth. <laughs> so the 16 years business they don't, they're not happy with because it increases competition for them. So I would say the government is now moving, not in terms of looking at what the sector really needs from the point of view of the consumer, but it is looking at what the sector needs from the point of view of only the players that exist in the sector, give them various benefits without any need to pass on those benefits to the consumer. So we are likely to see a much stronger, uh, shall we say, monopolies emerge in the sector. This question of mergers, etc., that will take place because all this removing of bandwidth limits is going to force more mergers. So we will say probably two, three monopolies emerge which would control the market and then you would get the cartelization take place which has been already something that existed 
which to some extent because Jio came in with a new technology using the 4G, making the voice free, all of these measures by which it changed the terms on which the industry was operating. Now you are going to probably see at some point a shake up of the industry and then an agreement with all the incumbents to fleece the consumers because this is what really monopoly at the end would mean. That's all the time we have for News Click today and as these things proceed, we'll be coming back to you on such issues. Keep following our website and our Facebook page. Thank you.